cannot teach the titan law as given you are bringing back what is dead to life he takes away the first that he may establish the second the titan law is dead the bible says the dead shall be thrown into the lake of fire he killed malachi 3 that he may establish the second so if they take you to malachi 3 take them to revelation 22 that the dead shall be thrown into the lake of fire so the titan law has been killed it must not exist side by side the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has set me what free from the law of sin and death join dr abel damino the senior pastor of power city international as he explores exegetically bible doctrine on tight and tithing date from sunday 14th of march to Sunday 21st of March 2021 Time Monday 15th to Saturday 20th 6 p.m. Daily Sundays 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. GMT plus one Join the broadcast on Radio Aquibum 90.5 FM Uyo 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. XL FM 106.9 Uyo 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Daily Unuyo FM 100.7 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. and Heritage Radio 104.9 10 p.m. till midnight and also on Kingdom Live Network Station also live on Facebook at Abel Damino Public Figure YouTube Abel Damino Ministries International Twitter Abel Damino and Instagram at Abel Damino Watch Real Time Host Doctors Abel and Rachel Damino Don't miss out
salvation. Say, Jesus is my salvation. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my righteousness. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we rejoice for the privilege to come together before your word in fellowship tonight. Thank you, Lord, that we have this opportunity to learn from your holy written word. And thank you that the Holy Ghost lives on our inside to guide us into all the truth. So I ask that revelation knowledge will flow freely tonight. That everybody connected to this service around the world. I decree that they are gifted understanding. The eyes of everyone flooded with light. Veils fall off. Clarity comes by your word. Your people built up, equipped, edified, and Jesus glorified. Thank you that by the end of this service, we'll all be the better for it. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our feet together as we say these words. I am born of God. 
I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name. And every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. All of the social media community, we are so glad to welcome all of you brothers and sisters online. And of course, I want to welcome the whole Aquaibom State community tonight, connected by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio Aquaibom, Unio FM, Inspiration FM, and Heritage FM. Hey guys, do me the favor tonight again, call a friend, a family, call a loved one, ask them to you hook up to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. Our social media community like you've always done let's get this good news to the ends of the earth help me invite some people on your page tag some people share the video on your page share with all the groups on your page join as many groups as possible and of course also help us put the videos on monogram telegram and whatsapp groups let's get this word to the ends of the earth and thank you for helping me to get this out there let me also welcome all our bible study centers all our house churches and i want also to welcome all our campuses all over the world we're so glad to have everybody connected Connected. Hey guys, it's going to be an exciting adventure in the word of his grace. And if you're just connecting for the first time today, we want to welcome you to the word feast. It's going to be an exciting time as we look into the word of God. All right, grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get into the word tonight. Glory to God forevermore. Mm -mm -mm. All right, we are still examining, understanding Bible truths on tithe and tithing. Understanding Bible truths on tithe and tithing. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse number 15. Brother Paul writes a letter to Timothy. And he says to Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth is the greek word there ototomio rightly dividing is one word ototomio is spelled as o r t h o t o m e o ototomio it means to cut straight from the greek word temno and otos to cut straight when that word is used it always means to do things properly it is used for mining. When miners, you know, go to mine precious stones. And it is opposed to innovation. It is not innovation. It is the opposite, which is excavation. That is, rather than creating something, you are only finding out what was the intent of the author. He also commended Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The word doctrine there is the word didascalia. Which means that the scriptures must be explained. The word didascalia is the word for teaching or explanation. And with teaching and explanation will come reproof, which is evidence. And then it will come the third word, which is ephanotosis, which means to correct, to reset a mindset. In Bible teaching, you must always expect mindsets to be challenged. And that is why whenever I teach, I admonish people to get ready to unlearn so you can relearn. Because if you're not willing to unlearn, you cannot relearn. Because some things have been taught you already that formed your mindset, whether right or wrong. And if you're not open to unlearning so you can relearn, you cannot grow. Because remember, it will take correction to bring you to instruction in righteousness, which is the word pedia. 
Pidea is the Greek word for raising up a child by the way of the mouth, which is actually what we call spiritual growth. Spiritual growth. And that is why I do not expect people to be excited when I teach especially doctrinal subjects that are, you know, that are such big issues in the body of Christ that have created a lot of school of thoughts which we shall be examining you know, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, the different school of thoughts. And then we'll be looking at them in alignment with the doctrine of scripture. So it's important to know that you must be open to adjustment. You must be open to correction so you can grow. Because if you're not corrected, you cannot grow. If your mindset is not corrected, you cannot grow. And you know, Brother Paul's hermeneutics or Brother Paul's theology of the Old Testament is focused on salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. He said to Timothy, from a child you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith. So the scriptures will make you wise unto salvation. The word Sophia, taken from the word, I mean the word Sophizo, taken from the word Sophia. Wise unto salvation, Soteria, through faith which is in Christ. So the Old Testament has one message in Christ. Salvation through faith which is in Christ. That is the message of the Old Testament. So obviously what Brother Paul was saying to Timothy was not that the Old Testament is salvation through faith only. But he must have selected what he focused on. He must have selected what he taught from the Old Testament. So he is saying that the doctrine of salvation is the core of Christian doctrine. The doctrine of salvation is the core of Christian doctrine within the Old Testament. It is also for the persuasion, persuasion. That is, the, the Old Testament contains within it a message of faith that brings correction. A message of faith that brings correction and that also produces spiritual growth. Spiritual growth. This shows us that this is the meal, the diet. This is the meal or the diet of the church. Salvation through faith which is in Christ. The diet of the church. There is a method by which the Old Testament was studied deliberately by the apostles of the Lamb. Remember, at this time, all the apostles had was the Old Testament, the scriptures, Genesis to Malachi. When the apostles were discussing during the apostolic era, they didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. They didn't have Ephesians, Colossians, Thessalonians. All they had was Genesis to Malachi. And you must also observe that when Jesus rose from the dead and was taking them through a Bible study in Luke chapter 24, verse 25, where he said to them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at Moses. That's the way Jesus taught the scriptures. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So the focus of Jesus' teaching of the scriptures were, was selective, was deliberate. Just like the apostles. They were the things concerning himself. Look at Romans chapter 16 verse 25. Let's hear brother Paul. Romans 16 25. Brother Paul says now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. So brother Paul is saying my gospel that is the TKS rule of Bible interpretation. That is the preaching of of Jesus Christ. Put it up again. That is the preaching of Jesus Christ. According to the revelation of the mystery. Which was kept secret since the world began. 
So now, how did the apostles who taught from the Old Testament, how did they handle the books of the Old Testament? What did they teach from there? Of course, obviously, they didn't teach everything. They didn't teach everything. Because if they taught everything, the New Testament will not be 27 books and the Old Testament 39 books. That's the first thing. Number two, the Old Testament books are very, very voluminous as opposed to the New Testament books. Which means, therefore, there was a selection as to what to teach. The apostles selected what to teach from the Old Testament. And it will come in handy in a few minutes. Because it means they didn't teach verbatim. They didn't teach verbatim. Now, that word preaching is the word kerugma. K-E-R-U-G-M-A. Kerugma, which is used for specific information. Specific information. And that word is from the word keruso. K-E-R-U-S-S-O. Which means to announce something. To announce something. It's used for preaching. So, he takes the Old Testament and said the preaching of Jesus Christ from the Old Testament. The preaching of Jesus Christ from the Old Testament. That word kerugma, you will find it in Matthew 12, 41. Matthew chapter 12, verse number 41. Matthew 12, 41. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Because they repented at the preaching, the Caruso, at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. In Mark chapter 16 verse 20, you will see another, another word they are used for Kerugma. Mark 16 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. They went forth and preached everywhere. Kerugma. So Kerugma is an activity. Something that is done. An activity. Something that is done. So brother Paul takes the Old Testament and his activity is to preach. To announce Jesus Christ. To announce Jesus Christ. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 21. Brother Paul says, For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Huh, I love this. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save those that believe. Now, don't forget the word preaching here was specific. Preaching what? Preaching Jesus Christ, the Keruguma. The preaching of Jesus Christ. Look at that 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23. 1 Corinthians 1 23. You will see now obvious, uh, very obvious. But we preach Christ crucified. We preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. We preach Christ. Look at that 1 Corinthians again, chapter 1, verse 18. Glory to God. Chapter 1, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. The preaching of the cross. Meaning it is a specific information. Not just preaching. But the preaching of the cross. The preaching of of the cross specific look at first corinthians chapter 2 verse 4 first corinthians chapter 2 verse 4 and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power so the question is 
What is the kerugma there? The kerugma is in verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 2. Mm -mm. For I determined not to know anything among you. Save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I determined to know nothing among you. From the preaching of the Old Testament. I don't want to know anything in the Old Testament. Only Christ. The only thing I'm looking for from Genesis to Malachi is Christ. I'm not interested in the wars. I'm not interested in the marriages. I'm not interested in the journeys. I'm not even interested in the world. I'm not interested in the kings and the kingdoms. I determine to know nothing. When I read Genesis to Malachi, save Christ, the Kerugma. Save Christ and him crucified. In other words, he ignored the facts and focused on the preaching of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 14. For if Christ be not risen, then our preaching vain and your faith is also vain. Look at verse 2 and 3 of 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 2 and 3. By which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Next verse. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to Genesis to Malachi. Next verse. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to Genesis to Malachi. Are you still in the building? So the kerugma there is Christ specific. Kerugma emphasizes the fact that the gospel is specific news. The gospel is specific news. That is, the gospel is specific sensitive. Specific news. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 17. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Look at Titus chapter 1 verse 2. Titus Chapter 1, verse 2. Lots of scriptures good for your health. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Next verse. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to to the commandment of God, our Savior. The word preaching there was a specific information. Specific information. So, when the apostles handled the Old Testament, their activity was to announce Christ. There was more than Christ in the Old Testament. There was history about wars, marriages, births, genealogy, which was key, genealogy. And the essence of genealogy in the Bible was to see how Christ will emerge. Even the history of the Bible was biased. We didn't see the history of how Peter was born because we don't need it. We don't have the history of how Paul was born. We don't need all of that. The activity that was key in the Old Testament was the preaching of Jesus Christ. The history of the Messiah. So brother Paul said that from the Old Testament, he has the preaching of Jesus Christ. The Kerugma or 
the specific information concerning the Christ. Look at that Romans 16 25 again. Romans chapter 16 verse number 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. According to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. According to my gospel which is the preaching of Jesus Christ. According, because sometimes a preacher will say, but I'm preaching Christ now. We open our service in the name of Jesus. We call Jesus and we close in Jesus. No, no, no. It is the preaching of Jesus Christ, not as a label, but the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation. That word revelation is the Greek word apocalypsis. According to the apocalypsis of the mysterion. The unveiling of the mystery. Old Testament mystery. New Testament revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. That is the essence of preaching. To bring Christ out of the pages of the scriptures. Glory to God. Now, We've been looking at the doctrine of tithe and tithing. And uh, every evening I try to ensure that I keep your mind on the facts of the gospel even as we are dealing with a doctrinal subject, all right? Which has to do with tithe and tithing. Yesterday I told you we we're going to examine brother Malachi, the prophet of the Old Testament. Who was the book of Malachi written to? Who was the book of Malachi written to? Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. Malachi chapter 1 verse number 6. <clears throat> A son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest that despise my name, and you say, Wherein have we despised your name? So the letter was written to the priests. O oh, priests that despise my name. So the first audience of Malachi was the priest. And this was consistent all through the book of Malachi. Look at Malachi chapter 2 verse 1. Malachi chapter 2 verse number 1. And now, O oh, ye priests... This commandment is for you, priest. Look at Malachi chapter 3, verse 3. <clears throat> and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. That they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So the instructions of the book of Malachi were to the Levites. They were the ones to bring the tithe into the storehouse. The instructions were not to the children of Israel. It was to the priests, the Levites, who had the responsibility to bring the tithe of tithes. Do you remember? Tithe of tithes into the storehouse. All right, now. Malachi wrote to the whole nation in Malachi chapter 3 verse 9 about not taking care of the oppressed and the poor. Look at Malachi chapter 3 verse 5. Malachi chapter 3 verse number 5. And I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false swearers and against those that... I that oppressed the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turned aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. So the key thing that Malachi was addressing in the book of Malachi was selfishness in the nation of Israel and selfishness among the priests. So what was Malachi saying? Observe. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. Malachi chapter 3 verse number 8. Will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? 
yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Verse 9. You are cursed, or you are cursed, <laughs> for our brothers in Ghana, you are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. All right? Now, <clears throat> the word, look at verse 10 quickly. Verse 10, let me do exegesis. Verse 10. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat on the land the word meat, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. The word meat refers to food. Meat. <clears throat> the word meat refers to food. We will see that the emphasis was on food being available to the Levites as you take a closer look at the words and the phrases that Malachi used. Take note of three words. Number one, meat. Number two, storehouse. Number three, house. Meat, storehouse, house. Meat, this was translated from the Hebrew word teref. Teref, meat. Teref, T E R E P H, T E R E P H. It was used 23 times. Teref, 23 times in the Old Testament books of the Bible. It majorly implies leaves, it is like vegetarian food, though it includes other foods. That there may be meat, teref vegetarian food which includes other foods remember we have seen that tithe is not money but food in our detailed exegesis the second word is storehouse the word storehouse was translated from the hebrew word otsa otsa o-t-s-a-r otsa it's used 79 times 79 times it implies a treasury a safe place where food is kept a treasury or a safe place where food is kept it was used in the book of deuteronomy and the first book of kings you can write down for further study at home deuteronomy 28 12 deuteronomy 28 12 Deuteronomy 32, 34. Deuteronomy 32, 34. First Kings chapter 7, verse 51. It is built in such a way that the storehouse can preserve food. It can preserve food because the, the, the tides were food stuff. So the storehouse was built in a way where it could keep food. And you know, because it was herbs mostly, it was perishable. So they had to build a storehouse where perishable food could be preserved. The third word is the word house. House. This was translated from the Hebrew word baith. Baith. B-A-Y-I-T-H. Baith. B-A-Y-I-T-H. And it was used 2,056 times. 2,000. 56 times it implies a temple a temple by a house a temple bring you all the tithes into my into the storehouse that there may be food in my by in my house these words were used literally and referred to physical things and the period the tithes were brought was the same period the priest we are present to minister on their behalf. Because the Levites were doing nothing. So they had no food to eat. Therefore, the Jews will bring food for the priests in the temple. And everything was physically explained. Now, 
The word robbed, you have robbed me. <clears throat> the word rob was translated from the Hebrew word kwaba, kwaba, Q-A-B-A, kwaba, which implies to cheat someone of something. To cheat someone of something. Not to give what belongs to another. The same word was used in Proverbs 22-23. Proverbs 22-23 as spoil. For the Lord will plead their cause and spoil the soul of those that spoil them. The word quaba implies to spoil or to circumvent, to cheat. To spoil, to circumvent or to cheat. It implies that what the other person deserve, you have not given him. It is different from describing a thief. The word rob there is not thief. A thief is one that breaks into the house to steal or to take something. However, these are two different things. Rob means I have deprived you what is your right or I have not given to you what is yours. To steal means to break in and take forcefully what is not yours. They are not the same. So, Anybody who tells you you are a robber because you are not paying tight, you are a thief, tell him, no, that's not what it means. Rob means kwaba. In the Hebrew, kwaba means you have kept back my entitlement. Or you are yet to give me what is mine. Alright? <clears throat> so, the prophet Malachi stated that the Levites we are not bringing the tithe, which was food to the storehouse. Since they are the ones that bring the food to the storehouse. Are we still in the building? <clears throat> now, that word rob is one word that people have really done all kinds of things to. If your boss is supposed to pay you a salary and he has not paid you, you call that rob. He has robbed you. But you won't sue him for not paying you. But if somebody breaks into your house to steal and you catch him, you sue him, he goes to prison. The two are not the same. Okay? You have robbed me means... You have not yet released what belongs to my storehouse so that there can be food in the baith, the temple. So those who are ignorant and are proponents of titan are very skillful in twisting scriptures. And the, the aim is this, Dr. Gabriel, to make people guilty. Because when you are guilty now, you will be trying to overdo so that you are free from that guilt. So guilt will lead you to performance. Performance is legalistic. See? Performance. There's a verse of scripture people read and you are like, what? Just like the man who said, you know, I told you yesterday, that the sin of Adam was that he touched the tithe. <laughs> in America, I was in the conference. Mama and I were sitting down in the service. And this is a man we respect so much. And he, was, he said it. I just told Mama, I'm done with this meeting, man. I'm done with this meeting. <laughs> See, that's why God said, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Yeah, because the day you touch it, you shall surely die. <laughs> that's for my Ghanaian brethren. All right, now... <laughs> Those kind of theories only work on those who don't read their own Bibles. And you know, the Bible calls those kind of statements endless genealogies with gender strife, you know. Someone said, if you don't pay your tithe, that's why you lost your job. What about those who paid their tithe and lost their job? What about those who paid their tithe and had accidents? What about those who pay their tithe and their wives miscarried the pregnancy? What do you say about that? Is God selective? Is God partial? He's not. He's good to all. 
So that's the danger of twisting scriptures. And then, of course, if you ask them, okay, what about somebody paid tight and had a, 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 you know, and lost his job? He said, God is testing them. God is trying to see whether they are serious. <laughs> Praise God. Very stupid explanations. Well, of course, you know, some, some, some people deserve the churches they attend. Yeah, they deserve the churches they attend. You know, uh, and, and some people also deserve the kind of pastors they have. Yeah. You know, the kind of pastor that pastors you, you deserve him. Because if you don't deserve him, you won't be sitting there like a zombie and letting yourself fool, you know. I mean, imagine teaching someone this with clear scriptures, explained well. I mean, I've been teaching tight since Sunday first service. Every day, for one hour, 30 minutes. And then the pastor asked me yesterday, do you still have something to say? I said, ah, I don't know if we shall finish on Sunday. He said, now, nah, Wow. <laughs> The word of God is rich, man. Amen. You know, it's very difficult for, for, for such people to believe that God does not require you paying tax for him to bless you. They've been wired to know that if you don't give, you can't get. Okay? And if the clouds are not full, they will not empty themselves. So keep giving and giving to fill up the cloud. Fill up the cloud. I never had Brother Paul teach such a thing. I don't know where they got it from. You want to believe that God requires tax, but you don't believe that you are saved once. You don't believe that salvation is eternal, but you believe that marriage must be eternal. Because salvation cannot be eternal, but marriage can be eternal. Something is doing you. <laughs> marriage must be eternal, but salvation cannot be eternal. And you even see people doing a, a teaching on you know, how to lose your salvation. And somebody is sitting down to hear somebody teaching him how to lose salvation. You are under witchcraft. You've been bewitched. <clears throat> you know, religion blinds the mind. You know, Moses, after the laws, he said unto those people, I am not going with you. <laughs> after giving them the law, he said, when you go to Canaan, God, me, I'm not coming. I'm not coming to Canaan. What? There's nothing in Canaan. What you people are going to Canaan for, I already have the reality. I believe the gospel. I don't need Canaan. And anyway, why are you not going to Canaan? You have sinned. Moses sinned. They will have asked him, what sin did you come? He broke the commandments that he gave them. He broke all of them, not even so. And Moses is still being read today. And as long as they are reading Moses, there's a veil on their minds. But when their hearts shall turn from Moses to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I thought somebody would shout glory. And somebody said, the great preachers are giving you a license to sin. And then, you know, I was there. One of the, one of the big guys in the country preaches the gospel. He, 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 he sat down there. We're having a pastor's meeting. He said, you know, these grace preachers are just giving people license to sin. And another, another father there looked at him and said, excuse me, sir. Have you sinned today? Have you, 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 have, have you sinned today? He kept quiet. He said, no, I need an answer. Have you sinned today? After a while, he said, well, the Bible says anyone that says he does not have sin is a liar. He said, oh, so you have sinned today. Is it grace you had when you sinned today? Busy intimidating people all over the place. Meanwhile, you yourself, you're not even sure. You know, these legalists, they are not sure of anything. Don't present Christ in another way. Christ died once and for all. Salvation is eternal. It is called eternal life. It is called eternal salvation. Hallelujah. Some people are so bound, you know. Some people are so bound that freedom looks like bondage to them. You didn't hear me. Some people are so bound that freedom looks like bondage to them. So even when they are loose, they refuse to be free. 
It's like somebody in prison. You open the prison door. You say, come out. You say, no, no, I like it here. <laughs> Whom the son says free is free indeed. Now, Romans chapter 2 verse 22. Romans chapter 2 verse 22. Pay attention now. Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery. Does thou commit adultery? This is brother Paul. Please pay attention. Thou that abhorrest idols, does thou commit sacrilege? That word sacrilege is to rob temples. To rob temples. And you know some of these legalists will quote that scripture for you. They will say there are robbers of temples. Then they will say this is Paul teaching. Rob temples. Then they will take you to Malachi 3. You have robbed me. Very funny exegesis. And if you are not well grounded, you will not be able to walk your way out. Then the, Now, that word is from two words. Herosolio from Herion, used for temple. H-I-E-R I-O-S-U-L-E-O -E Herosolio The word Hirion is H-I-R-E-I-O-N Hirion Used for temple It means to take what belongs to the temple And you know it makes a little sense Then they say Even brother Paul wrote Now that word Hirion Is used 75 times 75 times. And you know me, we're going to read a number of them. Matthew, pay attention. Matthew chapter 4 verse 5. <clears throat> the computer guy, we're going to move quickly because I have a lot to read. Matthew 4 5. Then the devil take him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. Temple. Matthew 12 5. Matthew chapter 12 verse 5. Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days, the priest in the temple profane the sabbath and are blameless matthew 21 14 matthew chapter 21 verse 14 and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them matthew 24 verse 1 matthew 24 verse 1 and jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Matthew 26, 55. Matthew 26, 55. <clears throat> In that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are you come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple and you laid no hold on me. Matthew, Mark 11, 11. Mark 11, 11. <clears throat> and Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. Mark eleven fifteen. And they came to, Jer they come to Jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple. Mark eleven sixteen. And will not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Mark eleven twenty seven. And as they came again, and they came again to Jerusalem, and he was walking in the temple. Mark twelve thirty five. Mark twelve thirty five. And Jesus answered and said, While he taught in the temple, how say the scribes that Christ is the Son of David. Mark 13 1. Mark 13 verse 1. And as he went out of the temple one of his disciples saith unto him Master see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. Mark 13 3. 13 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple Mark 14, 49. Mark 14, 49. I was daily with you in the temple teaching. Luke 2, 27. Pay attention. Luke 
chapter 2 verse 27 and he came by the spirit into the temple and when the parents brought him the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law Luke 2 37 Luke chapter 2 verse 37 and she was a widow of about four score and four years which departed not from the temple but served God with fastings and prayers night and day Luke 2 46 Luke chapter 2 verse 46 and it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors both hearing them and asking them questions Luke chapter 4 verse 9 Luke chapter 4 verse 9 and he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple Luke 18 verse 10 Luke chapter 18 verse 10 Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Luke 19, 45 and 47. Luke 19, 45 and 47. And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought. 47. 47. Okay. Yep. And he taught daily in the temple. He taught daily in the temple. Luke 20 verse 1. Luke chapter 20 verse 1. And it came to pass that on one of those days as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel, the chief priests and the scribes came upon him with the elders. Luke 21 verse 5. Luke 21 verse 5. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts. He said, Luke chapter 21 verse 37 and 38 and in the day in the daytime he was teaching in the temple and at the night he went out and abode in the mount that is called the mount of olives and all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple for to hear him Luke 22 52 53 Luke 22, 52, 53. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him, Be come out as against a thief with swords and staves. When I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth no hand against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Luke 24, 53. Luke 24, 53. And we are continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. Are you still here? Now, so every time we read this, the temple, the word Hirion, is a physical place. Physical, from what we read. John chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. John chapter 2 verse 14 and 15. And found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and changers of money sitting. 15. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple. And the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers money and overthrew the tables. John 5 14. John chapter 5 verse 14. Afterward, Jesus finded him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. John 7, 14. John 7, 14. Now, about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. John 7, 28. John 7, 28. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, You both know me, and you know whence I am, and I'm not come of myself. But he that sent me is true, whom you know not. John chapter 18, 20. John 18, verse 20. Jesus answered him, I speak openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret, have I said nothing? Acts chapter 2 verse 46. Acts chapter 2 verse 46. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple. And breaking bread from house to house. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Acts chapter 3 
verse 1 to 3. Acts 3, 1 to 3. Now Peter and John went up again together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Being the ninth hour. Acts chapter 3 verse 8. Acts chapter 3 verse 8. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple. Walking and leaping and praising God. Acts chapter 4 verse 1. Acts chapter 4 verse 1. Lots of scriptures but good for you. And as they spoke unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple. And the Sadducees came upon them. Acts 5.20 Acts 5.20 to 21. Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning. Acts 5.24 Acts chapter 5 verse 24 Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest had these things, they doubted of them where unto this will grow. Acts 5.42 Acts 5.42 And daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Take note of Acts 19.27 Give me Acts 19.27 but take note of it. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed whom all Asia and the world worship, worshipped the temple of the great goddess Diana take note of that Acts 21 26 to 30 then Paul took the men and the next day purifying himself for them entered into the temple Acts 21 27 and when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews, which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, Acts twenty two seventeen, And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. Acts 24, verse 6. Acts 24, 6. Who also had gone about to profane the temple, whom we took and will have judged according to our law. Acts 24, 12 and 18 for your home reading. Acts 24, verse 12 and verse 18. Acts 25, verse 8. You can read at home. Acts 26, 21. Now, the only place you will find it outside these places is 1 Corinthians 9, 13. 1 Corinthians 9, 13. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? And the word herion is always, always, please listen carefully. That word herion is always referring to the physical building called the temple. Always. Even from all the scriptures we just read. It always refers to the physical building called the temple. Now again, there's another Greek word I'd like us to look at. It is the word naos. Naos. N-A-O-S. That word naos is the word temple. It is used 46 times. 46 times. Take note of it. Matthew 23, 16 to 17. You can read at home. Matthew 23, 16 to 17. Matthew 23, 21. 35, 61. Matthew 23, verse 21, verse 35, verse 61. Matthew 27, verse 5. Verse 40, verse 51. I repeat, Matthew 27, verse 5, verse 40, verse 51. Matthew chapter 14, verse 58. Matthew chapter 15, verse 29, and verse 38. 
Luke chapter 1 verse 9. Luke chapter 1 verse 21 to 22. We're doing Bible study, right? Luke 23, 45. John chapter 2, verse 19 to 21. Circle that one. We'll come back to it. John chapter 2, verse 19 to 21. Then Acts chapter 7, verse 48 and 24. Acts chapter 7, verse 48 and 24. Then Acts chapter 19, verse 24. Now, in the epistles, rather than use the word herion, he now says, look at 1 Corinthians 3.16. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Give me verse 19 of 1 Corinthians 3. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? Ephesians 2, 21. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. So that he as God seated in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Take down these other scriptures for study at home. Revelation 3.12 Revelation 7, 15. Revelation 11, 1 to 2. Revelation 11, 19. Revelation 14, 15. Revelation 14, 17. Revelation 15, 5 to 6. Revelation 15, verse 8. Revelation 16 verse 1. Revelation 16 17. Revelation 21 22. So we have two words. Hirion and Naos. So every time you find the word Hirion, he is talking about the building, physical building and its surroundings. Physical building and its surroundings. Hirion Sulio. The robbing of the physical temple. The robbing. We are dealing with rob, right? The robbing of the physical temple. So that temple, brother Paul was talking about, cannot be metaphorical. It has to be physical. He is talking of a physical robbery of the temple. So whatever he says there has to be a physical temple. So was he referring to the tithe in Romans 2.22? Huh? No, because it has to be a physical robbing of the temple. Now, just pay attention. For that Romans chapter 2 verse 22 to be applicable... Remember, I'm equipping you against people that will try to be funny. And we have to be well equipped. For that Romans chapter 2 verse 22 to be applicable in the new covenant, it has to be a physical temple. And of course, we don't have physical temples today. So now go to Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 25 where something like that is inferred. Deuteronomy 7.25 The graven images of their God shall you burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. So the closest here is the taking of things in the temple of idols. Stealing things 
from the temple of idols. That's the closest. Now, so look at that Romans 2.22 again. That thou sayest a man should not commit adultery. Does thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols. Does thou commit sacrilege? That is, do you rob the temple? And he's talking about a physical temple here. So was Paul talking about taking the tithe? No. When he said you commit sacrilege, let me submit to you, he was not talking about the temple of God because there he mentioned idols. Idol there means it will be a temple of idols because we have temple of idols in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16. Temple of idols. And we read about the temple of Diana. Temple of idols. So he was not referring to the tithe. One other thing that is synonymous to what he is saying here is Acts 19.37. I want to make sure there is no scripture from any angle that can be twisted on the subject of tithe. I'm fishing all of them out for you. Acts 19.37. Put it up. For you have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. So, robbers of churches. Now, somebody that wants to be funny can read that and connect it to Malachi 3. Okay? So, let's, let's, <laughs> let's expose these robbers of churches. Are you still in the building? Now, give me the RSV of Acts 19.37. RSV, Revised Standard Version. I love the rendition there. Now observe. For you have brought these men here who are neither sacrilegious. See? Sacrilegious. But King James calls it robbers of churches, which misleads. Because the original is sacrilegious, which are people who steal from idols. Look at it. Not blasphemers of our goddess. So, those who use rub for tithes will come here. But now you know. The word here refers to temple of idols. Where did it come from? Look at that Acts chapter 19 verse 29. Acts 19 29. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. Now look at verse 24 to 27, the pretext of Acts 19. Acts 19, 24. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. Next verse. 25. Whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sars, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. 26. Moreover, you see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but also throughout all Asia, this Paul had persuaded and turned away much people, saying that there be no gods which are made with hands. 27. So that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised. And a magnificent should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipped. So Paul is teaching against idol worship in this context. This was the defense when they wanted to kill this man. Verse 37, Acts 19, 37 again. Glory to God. For you have brought hither this man, which are neither robbers of churches nor yet blasphemers, of your goddess. So that statement was in defense. So the church is there. Should be temple of idols. Like Romans 2.22. Those who steal. From the temple of idols. That word robbing. Can also be seen otherwise. Second Corinthians 11.8. Look at the way brother Paul used the word rob. I robbed other churches. Taking wages of them to do you service. The word sulao in the Greek, I robbed. Sulao, S-U-L-A-O, sulao. It, it, is, it means to plunder or to take bounties from. 
What brother Paul was saying is, I took what was theirs to give unto you. For example, if we take money from Power City Uyo to give to Power City Portacot. So, I robbed is an old English word to take off to give to another. That's why the Bible says Jesus taught it not robbery. Taught it not robbery. In Philippians 2 6, it's an old English word. Though he taught it not to hold on to robbery, to hold on to, you know, to hold on to something. He taught it not to hold on to being God, but stripped himself of being God. So the robbery there is not arm robbery. It's an old English word. When you see robbery, he's talking about holding on to, to take off. So in no way does the New Testament teach robbing anybody. Whether the church, the temple of God, by not giving 10%. The tithe was never money. It was always food for the Levites. Is that clear? So anybody who wants tithe today, get some gari, some curry, some crayfish, and give to him. And make sure when you are giving him, you meet him in a physical temple. In the land, Canaan. That's the only condition on which to give him the tithe. Because he cannot be collecting our food and have businesses. You can't be taking food to him when he has universities, secondary school, primary school. You can't be taking food to him when he's selling his books. So anybody that is insisting... We have to build a temple for him. Let him go and stay there. Then we create a small uh, coal room inside where we store agricultural products and some animals uh, and some yams. Kaba, right? So that there will be meat in the house. So can a believer give 10% of his earnings? Yes. A believer can give 10% of his earnings, but it's not tight. You can decide, I want to give to my pastor 10% of my money. That is not tight. It's a percentage of your income you have decided to give. Just like you can give 20, you can give 40, you can give 50. In fact, you can give your pastor 100% of your money. It's your money. But not tight. Not tight. Since you are not a farmer, you cannot tight. Since there are no Levites, and I know me, I'm not a Levite, so don't bring tithe to me. <laughs> a believer can give a percentage of his money in the church, but he should never be thinking he's acting on Malachi 3 or Leviticus 27 or Numbers 18 or Genesis 14 or Genesis 28. Anyone teaching those things to believers to give them percent is either lying to them or is being ignorant for those who claim it was before the law there are many things abraham did that you are not doing you cannot teach tithe using abraham because there's no war you went for <laughs> don't let anybody scare you because by the time you stop tithing maybe something goes wrong don't let them tell you, you see, you have stopped tithing. I told you. No. They use those words to subvert you. And the people who make money from the tithe are the priests. Someone said God told him to go and make God's people rich. And he ended up being rich. You didn't hear that. <laughs> you didn't hear me. Somebody else said, there is a money anointing on me. I carry a money anointing. And truly, there's a money anointing on him. Because by the time he's finished with you, all your monies are in his hand. Jesus washed our sins. He didn't wash our brains. 
Manipulators are very bad. They will tell you stories. And the way they work is, they will give you testimony. You won't have no teaching. It's testimony. The other day, I was in Oka. The other day, I was in South Africa. The other day, I was in Ghana. They will tell you stories where you cannot go and confirm. Their theology is based on their stories. Which some of them are exaggerated and some of them are not even true. You know, back in the days when I started ministry newly, in the early, in the, in the late 80s, I, I met a man of God. This man can lie. Oh my goodness, this guy can lie. And he lies without apology. He believes his lies. So when we went somewhere to preach, I think we were preaching for either full gospel businessmen somewhere. And he was preaching. And I was sitting on the pulpit with him. But he was preaching. He would lie and lie and lie. Then he would turn and say, Abel, is that not true? And I'm sitting on the pulpit and everybody's looking at me. I don't know whether to say yes or no. I just do, uh. <laughs> He would lie and lie. In fact, one time I was on the pulpit, he lied to a point where I said, uh. <laughs> I couldn't pretend. <laughs> Lying spirit is afraid of him. I'm not joking. All are lies. Nothing like that ever happened. And to what end was he lying? Money. There's a more excellent way. A pastor asked me a few days ago, so Dr. Damina, now you have destroyed this whole thing. Now, I'm just waiting for you to teach us how is a pastor going to sustain himself in ministry. Don't miss Saturday, Sunday first service, Sunday second service. Because we will talk about the New Testament and how ministry ought to function in the New Testament. So if you're a pastor or you're a leader or you are planning to be a pastor or you have a pastor that has blocked you because of my teaching, ask him to unblock you <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> On Saturday, Sunday first service, Sunday second service. In fact, from tomorrow evening, I'm beginning. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday first service, Sunday second service. And they should patiently wait for me to finish. Not the one they enter for five minutes. I, I, I'm not talking money. They come out. Because my teachings are not money. My teachings are Christ. But however, in the teaching of Christ, we deal with other doctrinal positions that makes a believer wholesome. Is that clear? I said, is that clear? So if a pastor is watching, or you know some pastors, tell them tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday first service, Sunday second service, is going to be the best messages they will have ever said I preach in my life. <laughs> Glory! You know, the scriptures are given for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. So when we pull down, we must build up. We don't just pull down and scatter. No. When we pull down what is wrong, then we build up what is right. So it will correct you first. Then it will instruct you. Scriptures will correct you. Then it will instruct you in righteousness, which is spiritual growth. Are we together here? So we have used Sunday till today to pull down things, pull down mindsets, wrong teachings. So from tomorrow, we start building so we bring people to a place of clarity on how we give as believers. Are we blessed? Are we excited tonight? <clears throat> now, please pay attention. We are in the family of God. We don't pay wages to our father. We are in the family of God. We don't pay wages to our father. He has blessed us. Remember, the Israelites didn't pay tithe for 40 years. Yet, they never lacked. 40 years. Nobody among them paid tithe. Yet, they never lacked. They wanted food, it was more than enough. They wanted water, the rock gave them water. Their clothes never grew old. Their shoes never grew old. Yet, they never paid tithe. Before they entered the promised land. Because the tithe was for the promised land. That means Moses never paid tithe. And observe, they never paid tithe and they never lacked anything. They never paid tithe and they never lacked anything. They never paid tithe and they never lacked anything. God said to them, I gave you manna, I gave you water. 
When they were cold, the pillar of fire. When they were hot, the cloud. He took care of all their psychological, emotional, physical needs. Yet none of them paid tithe. So when people say, if you don't pay tithe, you to be tithe. Tell them, but the people that were asked to pay tithe, didn't pay tithe and yet it was not tithe. The original congregation, the original audience that the tithing was given to, didn't even pay it. Because all of them died in the wilderness. It is their children who entered the promised land that paid the tithe. But yet, even without tithing, they lacked nothing. So, tithing is not a key to prosperity. Tithing is not the foundation for prosperity. Because if it was tithing that determines prosperity, when they were not paying tithe for 40 years, they would have been broke and hungry and lacked. But they lacked nothing. They, 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 they had more than abundance. You know, when manna was falling from heaven, they were even hiding it. And it was breading worms. Because they were not supposed to hide manna. God was sufficient for every day. So there was no need to be saving. Tomorrow there's another supply. Every day I had this supply. So eat enough and more than enough. And don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. But they couldn't trust God. So when they were hiding it, it was breeding worms. And yet, God didn't get angry and stop. It was still coming. God is faithful. God is a good God. He's not in a transaction. He's a loving father. You don't bribe him to do something for you. Before you knew you need something to be done, he already did it in Christ. Glory to God. He that spared not his son, but gave him up for us all. How shall he not also with him freely give us all things? Oh, hallelujah. Stand on your feet. That's all I've got for you tonight. Glory. 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 He told men of God that he sent to go and preach. He said, when I sent you, Without a bank account. I sent you without pause. I sent you without script. Lacked ye anything? They said nothing. You can't be on the mission of Jesus. Sincerely and lack anything. He, he has a way. God has a way of taking care of those who are honestly laboring in the vineyard. He said lacked ye anything? They said nothing. And when you are going, he said, look, don't take your bank account. Don't take shoes. Don't take anything. Go. And any house you enter, whatever they give. That means once you are on the mission, there will be people to give to you. You don't have to manipulate them. Just trust God and preach the truth. And rely on him. And he has a billion ways of taking care of you. Glory to God. It looks like I've started a tomorrow's teaching already. He said, lack to anything. They said nothing. Then he said, a laborer is worthy of his wages. Hallelujah. It's a new day. The body of Christ is coming of age to a place that is a defining moment for the truth of the gospel. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Father, we pray tonight. Kalodo, can we speak in tongues for a few seconds? Zenzo so so bi anakatola lebro zakele ne manga agaroto so kalada babra gado jekelea agareto so kolodo bombo lebrana kakoroto suka la nama mamara katona kalia egebo jakaka alamo nokera rakoto sekila egere de bazo erene makata babara gadase kelene majoko egelene mama agalene mamo egere tesika alama nokoro to sika la nama garata sekia ege bojaka mambrega dozo pira kadamanda e jacola da baba bambro godoso kolia agara da ba shoka ya da ba praise you father in the name of jesus father we praise and honor the name of jesus Thank you for the opportunity to grow in knowledge, to grow in grace, to abound in the sufficiency of Christ Jesus. Thank you for your word that has comfort with clarity. Your people are equipped, built up, edified. Thank you, Lord, that the kingdom of God is experiencing a new dimension of growth and increase through the teaching of the word. Disciples are being equipped. Ministers are being equipped. The body of Christ is the better for it. And we declare right now where there are sick people be healed in the name of Jesus. Sickness and disease, go! We rebuke you, spirit of 
of infirmity. We rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get your hands off of God's property. Sick body be healed in the name of Jesus. And Father, we rejoice. And we thank you for the privilege of learning tonight. Thank you for the blessing upon your people. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Oh, glory to God, I tell you. I'm excited tonight. Now listen to me. I'm joining Mr. Michael Bush in the other studio. In the next one or two minutes, you don't want to go away. You want to be a part of the question and the answer session so that we can bring clarity to your issues and questions and queries so we can answer your phone calls and respond to you. But it's exciting to see what God is doing in our time. Once again, don't forget, get more pastors, get people that have blocked you because of tithe. Tell them to hook up from tomorrow. And so that they can hear the right, you know, the right way to do it. And help them, help them reach out to a number of them. It's going to be an exciting time as we study the more, the word of God. Praise God. I want to take up your offerings, everybody. Grab a good offering. We give in honor of Christ. We give in honor of what Christ has done. We give so that this gospel can reach more people. We give so that this gospel continues to be preached to the ends of the earth. And I want to thank you, partners and friends who continually give to this ministry to help us get this gospel on all the platforms, television, radio, stations to get the gospel out to where the people are who needs to hear this gospel. I know that there are many of you that God is tearing up who are going to do more to help us get on television, get on different radio stations. We want to get this message in every part of the world, on radio, on television, so that people can be helped who are, have been bound by religion and messed up by the other gospel. I know that God is raising people all over the place. Money is coming into your hands. A lot of you are going to make so much money this year and you will do much, much more for the kingdom of God. I know it. I know it. So expect it and be ready for it and make up your mind so that when it comes, you do what you need to do. But I'm excited tonight. Now lift up your offerings. Father, we give in faith. We give with joy. Thank you for the privilege of honoring your word. Our offerings are instruments for the advancement of the kingdom and we honor you with our offerings. And we decree right now that everyone that is giving tonight, your needs are met supernaturally. Where you need a miracle, receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive a miracle. And Father, we rejoice that the blessing continues Continues to reach out, touching lives, touching families, and changing people. We give you praise for answer prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Oh my goodness. Those of you online, the banking details are scrolling. On television, the banking details are there. And of course, radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush will read the banking details for you. What a joy, what an opportunity, and an honor to serve Christ and to serve his body with the grace of God. Uh, you don't want to miss the next studio, but remember tomorrow 6 p.m. and Saturday 6 p.m. Sunday first service, second service 8 a.m. GMT plus 1 and 11 a.m. GMT plus 1. I will, I will try to trust God to round up on this series before we begin something else that the Holy Ghost has already laid in my heart. But we love you guys. I look forward to seeing all of you in the other studio. And until I connect with you again, enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service tonight. Uh, glory! Amen! We trust Woo! that you have been blessed by this message. For these, all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damino, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com Radio audience, the account name is Power City International. You have three banks, there's FCMB, there is Zenith, and there's UBA. On this edition, we start with Zenith 10 12 36, 59 12 10 12 36. 
5912 Power City International remains the account name. So too for FCMB 2982-68-2028, 2982-68-2028 FCMB, and so too, that is Power City International for UBA. 139-26465, 139-26465, 139-26465, 4-6-5, Power City International. Okay, final announcement for sponsorship. And this one um, needs uh, not, not too much talk. Um, I, I think the world should rise and support this effort. And that number to call if you want to support this program, you want to sponsor, you want to partner, whatever you want to do, the number is plus two three four. Again, if you are calling from outside the country, otherwise it's 0803 275 or you send an email or two to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Doctor, of course, is DR. My name is Michael Bush, and i just love to, at this point, um, just prepare the grounds to be joined by Global Baba, the international televangelist, um, radio broadcaster, somebody who has used uh, every medium possible to try and disseminate the word of God. Written 32 books and counting, and um, he teaches like no one else does. Help me welcome Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental, Mr. Bush. So good to see good you. Good to see you, Global Baba. Oh, my so goodness. Nice. <laughs> it was difficult for me to, to stop, stop that, that service. service. My I know. goodness. I know. Shaka Global Baba. Hey. <laughs> this man. I tell you, this thing Global is Baba. Yes, bubbling all over the place. Yes, sure. It's bubbling all over the place. Yes, Global Baba, it but, is. But good to have you here. It's better for me, Global Baba. Please. And um, thank you for the massive work you do for the world. Thank you. We're going to begin as we always do. Yes. It's a prayer for our world. Father, we thank you that the glory is all over the nations. Men and women are coming under the influence of the glory of your word and the spell of darkness, the spell of deception, the spell of wrong teachings collapses like a pack of cards in the presence of the truth of the gospel. And so mightily is growing the word around the nations and prevailing. Thank you for Bomb State. Thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for our governments and thank you for governments around the world who continue to create enabling environments for the gospel to thrive. And we give you praise for massive salvation and disciples multiplying around the world to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Global Baba, let's launch out. By the way, you know, every day, Global Baba, you, you teach. I, I glean a thing or two. You know, so I didn't know. I thought that um, as soon as Jesus resurrected, uh, he didn't waste time uh, before he ascended. You know, no, he ascended and came days. back the same day. He ascended, oh. came back, and spent 40 days before going what? to be seated. Oh, he ascended. Why did he ascend? To go and see the Father or to do what? He, he ascended to go as high priest to con consummate the work he has done. Mm. Then he came back the same day and entered the room without window and door and made the disciples. Wow. Then stayed with them for 40 days, teaching them the things they couldn't understand before. This time, not by parables, but by revelation. Okay, Global Papa, let's launch out. I, I, the last edition of the program, we slept uh, here in the live studios here in New York. By the way, this is happening live from the international headquarters of Power City International, located at number 98 Wangiba. Wangiba is a street in the heart of Uyo. Uyo is the city, is the state capital of Akwaibum. Akwaibum itself is a state in the south southern part of Nigeria, itself a country on the west coast of Africa. And um, Global Baba does real good. So, Global Baba, we start here from. Hello, Pastor. I listened to one of your teachings through WAP TV. In that teaching, you said Christ does not dwell in us, but the Holy Spirit does. What about these scriptures that say Christ is in us? The scriptures are Galatians 1, 15 to 16, Galatians 2, 20, Galatians 4, 19, Ephesians 3, 17, Colossians 1, 27, etc. These scriptural references, Global Baba, specifically mentioned Christ in us and not the Holy Spirit, please. Pastor, help explain more on this, especially since we believe that God is only one. There's a lot of teaching that I will need to give you to arrive at the understanding of what you just asked me, and we don't have the time. 
My advice is follow this teaching series that I'm on now. In the process, you will understand what, what we mean by saying that Christ is a man. Christ is a man. He rules a man. And then gave you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of his Son. Is the same Spirit. Is the same Christ. You know, but there's a lot of teaching and explanation from scriptures that will eventually bring you to that understanding. So I will advise you to follow the teachings. You will understand what it means. Still from Uyo, hello Global Baba, Mr. Intercontinental Michael Bush. Since you said Jesus rose with his physical body, Global Baba, and showed that exegetically uh, from the scriptures, ascended with the same body, does it not mean that Jesus lives in heaven with his physical body? If it is so, then can't we conclude that Jesus, even after ascension, is not a spirit, but a physical God-man personality? Mike, you know you. Mike is man, but not man in the, in, in, in the material. He is man in the immaterial. That's why his body could enter a room without a door and a window. Your own body cannot enter, but his own enter, because his body has been glorified. The glorified body can live in the physical and in the immaterial. So right now, Christ is in the immaterial, which is glorified body, seated on the throne. The live audience and Pastor Emmanuel Peter writing, said, Global Baba, I'd like to thank you for your good work in the body of Christ via the knowledge of Christ. Last time, Global Baba, you said the body of man was created to live forever. There are different ways, hell, hellfire, everlasting fire being used in the Bible. Does it mean that sinners in hell would stay alive in everlasting pain in hell since one's life cannot be destroyed? Thank you. Well, the Bible doctrine of uh, fire, hell, and all of that, the truth is there's, it's not like fire, fire, fire. You know, it's not like cooking fire, okay? Now, but if you follow my teaching in Soteria Season 5, and the thing is with doctrinal things, I try not to give teasers where a lot of exegesis is needed. So I don't get you confused. So I don't give you uh, an idea of what is not. Because Bible teaching takes time. There are things we can give you teasers for. But there are things we can't give you teasers for. So, and, and because the, the doctrine of hell has not been taught well by a lot of the body of Christ. That is why I will need you to get Soteria 5 and listen to it for about 35 hours. Follow the trend of teaching and it will be clear to you what will happen to the body of a man, the meaning of hell, the meaning of forever, the meaning of forever and ever is different from forever and ever and ever. They are all different. These are all concepts that has to be explained doctrinally. So my advice, order for Soteria season five. It will clarify all of it for you. Our last take from Uyo Akwaibum State on this edition of the program. Hello, Pastor. You said the Old Testament also has the gospel. Why then did the Bible say that whoever reads the Old Testament is covered with the veil of Moses? Please explain more of this. Thank you. Well, again, the Old Testament is not books, and the New Testament is not books. So you are thinking of books, but what I'm teaching is not books. The Old Testament is a relationship with God that is predicated on what man can do to qualify. The New Testament is a relationship with God that is predicated on what Christ has done that has qualified the believing man. That is why there is New Testament in Old Testament and there is Old Testament in New Testament. So it is beyond books. It's relationships and it has to be taught and explained. So as long as you stay in that relationship where man has to qualify, there is a veil. But when your heart will turn from self-effort to what Christ has done, the veil is taken away and your eyes are open to the realities in the gospel. Okay, I'm believing with you in, this, uh, in Akwaibom any moment now. I'm going outside the stage first door. Our first caller. Hello. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Bui. Thank you for joining us. Your name, where are you calling from? Thank you, sir. Good evening, Daddy. Good evening. Bless you. Thank you, sir. My name is Pastor Chinam Semeke, sir. I'm calling from a human band, not LGA in Imote. Okay, bless you. Daddy, I don't know how to thank you. I've been following you for the almost more than one year now with rapt attention. And I want to confess, my life is absolutely transformed. Praise I don't know, my desire is on fire to preach this gospel like 
Don't worry, we are, we are, you are really seeing a generation, we are rising as a tsunami, we will take over the world very soon. Amen. God bless you. Dad. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Quickly, my question, Daddy. Uh, yes, yes. Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Okay. We are just saying, uh, if you being able to know how to give, give good gifts to your children, how much more to so Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Yes. Yeah, so since the born again receives the Spirit at the point of birth, what does he mean in this context to ask him, to ask the Father of the Spirit? That is one. Secondly, okay. um, since nobody was born again, until Jesus rose from the dead. What do we what do we call the uh, the Old Testament the experience of the Old Testament thing? Okay. Before Jesus rose from the dead, we are they saved? Is this salvation or what? Okay. That's my question, Daddy. Thank you, sir. Bless you and thank you for calling, man of God. Uh, quickly, um, what Jesus was doing in that Luke chapter eleven was a parable. He was actually giving them parables. And in that parable, he was telling them that if you that are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father give the Holy Spirit? That is, the Holy Spirit is above everything that any human being can give to his children. That means the father will go to any extent to give you what you need. That's what Jesus was actually saying. It's not literal. It's a parable. You just get the lesson. And the lesson there is that God will not withhold anything that is good from the people whom he loves. Second question is um, the Old Testament saints. What happened to them since the Holy Ghost was not given until yes, Jesus so. rose from the dead? They believed and they were saved in a promissory note, but they were not regenerated. They were saved in a promissory note till they died with a the promise. Then on the resurrection of Jesus, he went into Hades and took the promissory note from them and give them eternal life. And all of them rose together. So that's exactly what happened in the Old Testament. No, Baba. The intercontinental. You know, this world is not balanced. Hello. Many thanks for Hello. joining us. Good evening, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for joining us. Anywhere you're calling from. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Michael Booth. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, Papa. Good evening. I've been blessed by your people throughout this book. Praise God. Bless you, sir. Praise God. Um, bless you. Reading through the book of Mark, when we were asking about divorce, at 11, Jesus answered them, anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her, and then her survives her. So I want to ask, what is Bible doctrine or teaching on uh, remarrying? And a Christian who, who divorced out of whatever reason, remarried. What is Bible doctrine on it? And then in Luke, the while I was reading, when Jesus was, when Jesus got in um, the uh, valley of the Nazareth, when he met the demon possessed man who was possessed and was living in the tomb. That was said he wanted to cast out the demon. And then, what, I wanted to know what happened. Was there really a bandage? Jesus was not asking demon how many were they? What really happened there? What really happened there? Was there really Jesus talking to demon? What happened? Thank you, sir. What's your name? Where are you calling from, ma'am? Thank you, ma'am. Okay, bless you and, and thank you for asking. All right, the first question is um, um, divorce. Divorce, yes, divorce. divorce. Now you must remember that when Jesus said the things he said in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he was under the law. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. When the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made by a woman, made under the law. So he was under the law, and because he was under the law, he said things that were within the confines of the law and a few radical things that introduced the reality of the New Testament. But when he talked about divorce, he stayed within the confines of their law and said to them, if you divorce your wife except for adultery, if you marry another, you've committed adultery. And he was saying that under the law. But after Jesus rose from the dead, Brother Paul began to talk about marriage, remarriage, and divorce. And he says, if the unbelieving decides to go, let him go. And when he goes, the husband or the wife is not in bondage. Which means if there's a separation by reason of either threat to life, of course, that must be the reason why there will be a separation in marriage. Threat to life or persecution. We always say it is persecution when a husband is beating his wife or when the wife is beating the husband and 
molesting you and making life unbearable. That is persecution. Even for the preaching of the gospel, Jesus said if you are persecuted, run away from the place. How much less in marriage? So if you are being persecuted in marriage, take your bag and go to a place where you will still be alive tomorrow to either correct the marriage or if the marriage never gets corrected again, where you can remarry and continue to fulfill the plan of God. So yes, there are situations for divorce. There are situations for remarriage in the New Testament. However, it has to be approached with proper counseling from the word of God. I will recommend for you my book, Understanding Marriage, Relationships, and, uh, and, uh, and Family Life. It deals with divorce and all that, and all that is exegetically taken care of. If you order for that book today, spend time, read that book. It will clarify all that I have said to you with Bible scriptures well explained. Then okay. the second question on demons. Jesus was talking to demons. Well, that is the way the man who saw it recorded. But Jesus and demons don't have interaction. He gives them a charge and they have to go out. All right. But in some cases, he asked them, how many are you? And it, it was not a practice. He didn't do it more than once. So that does not become a doctrine to go around asking demons. How many of you, what are your names? But Jesus did in one or two instances because that was what he was led to do in that instance. And of course, he didn't just dwell there taking notes on demons' lectures. He ordered them out. The important thing is to cast them out. So we are outside our Kwaibum and indeed the south southern part of the country. We head to the southeastern part. Imo State, be nice. Hello, Global Baba and Mr. Bush. Thank you, Global Baba, for so much in-depth revelation of the in-Christ realities. Please, Global Baba, I need explanation on John 2, 11 and John 4, 42. Did people believe in the gospel before resurrection? Thank you. I'm Kechi Inoweri, Imo State, Nigeria. Yes, in Kechi, people believed in the gospel before resurrection. They did. The Bible tells us that, uh, you know, they believed. They believed in the promise. They believed in types. They believed in shadows. Those are the people we call the Old Testament saints. And their record is in Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Abel. By faith, Enoch. All those were believers in the promise of Christ. And because they believed in the promise of Christ, they were saved, but they were not regenerated. Until Jesus rose from the dead, they experienced regeneration. So yes, they believed in the gospel. From Imo to Anambra State, still in the southeastern part of Nigeria. Hello, Global Baba. I have been so blessed by your teachings. Your oil will never run, run dry in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Please, sir, enlighten me. How does one know if he or she is called by God for a special work? Thank you, man of God. Chukura Chine in Anambra State. Well, spiritual growth is what produces ministry. You are called by God once you get born again. The moment you are born again, you are called by God. Every believer is called. However, that calling finds expression as you grow spiritually. That's why we say ministry is a fruit of spiritual growth. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12, 11, 12, and 13. He that descended, ascended, and gave gifts to men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. Why? To do the work of ministry. So every child of God has a calling. It's just that many are not taught, many are not trained, so they don't know they have a calling. And they keep sitting down in the church doing nothing. But every child of God is supposed to be to answer to the call of evangelism, raising disciples, and advancing the kingdom of God. However, when you have matured through the teaching of God's word. We continue our road trip within Nigeria from the southeastern part of the country, getting back into the south-southern part. Auchi, a dose state, Nigeria, here we come. Hello, Global Baba. I've been listening to your messages for such a long period now. In fact, my pastor introduced me to your messages, Global Baba. My pastor used to teach like you, but of recent, some of the things he once taught against, like tithing, he's telling us now to do. In fact, he even printed a tithe booklet and shared among the members. Since then, <clears throat> since then, I don't feel like going to the church again because it's more of money nowadays than teaching the word. And I'm no longer feeding from him. So I write to you now to know if there is any of your campuses in my area. That's around Auchi, Edo State. I'm from Auchi in Edo State. If there is any, please let me know, sir, so that I can join them in fellowship. Thank you. That's a serious matter. <laughs> ah. You don't preach this gospel until you are fully persuaded. 
If you are not fully persuaded, you will, you will make more clear of yourself. Because there's no point. Jesus said, no man builds a tower without sitting down to count the cost. You know, it's very important. So, well, we will advise you about a campus. We have campus in that city. We'll advise you and connect you to the coordinator of the campus so that you begin to worship with brethren and enjoy the gospel. Those are the kind of people, Brother Paul, who call foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, having begun in the spirit, are you not perfected in the flesh? Those are the kind of people, you know, Paul will say, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. The preaching of tithe and preaching of envelopes for tithing is another gospel. It's not the gospel of Christ. In the gospel of Christ, we give generously, we give bountifully, we give sacrificially as we propose in our hearts. We'll be leaving the south southern part of the country that's nigeria and going straight to the southwestern part first though this anonymous entry for the road ochai vivian writes global papa i need clarification on first john 3 3 and every man that had this hope in him purified himself even as he's pure again look at verse 2 Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And let every man that has his hope of the resurrection of the body, which is what we call the rapture, anyone that has a hope for the rapture, the resurrection of the body, purifies. How do you purify your, yourself? By staying in the word. You keep staying and feeding on the word, and the word keeps cleansing you and washing you. And, you know, so you stay in the word. That's what it simply means. Now to the southwestern part of Nigeria, Ogun State, here we come. Hello, Global Baba and Mr. Michael Bush, please, Global Baba. Did Elijah die since the scripture in 2 Kings 2, 11, say a chariot of fire took him to heaven? Then John 1, 18 says, no man had seen God at any time. So please, any clarity on this. And Tami Lua from Ogun State. If you've been following my teachings, I have told you that the Old Testament must be explained. The Old Testament must be explained. So, the Old Testament is explained in the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 13 answers your question. These all died. Elijah died, Enoch died, all of them died. Jesus said in John chapter 3 verse 11 to 13, No man has ascended up to heaven, but the Son of Man, Son of man which came down from heaven. So, nobody went to heaven. All of them died. They only went to heaven upon the resurrection of Jesus when the graves opened and all of them went together with Jesus bodily after 40 days on earth. Okay, Global Baba from the southwestern part of Nigeria now to the north central part. Benue, hello Global Baba and Mr. Bush. Global Baba, a man married to more than one wife would go to hell on Monday from Benue State. Well, first of all, as a believer, your target is not to marry more than one wife because you are born of the word, you do the word. What does the word say? Male and female, not male and females. Male and female. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So marriage within the confine of God's word is a man and a woman. However, as it is with all human institutions, it's possible that in your culture or where you came from, it was a status for you to marry four wives or five wives or 10 wives, or even 15 wives. And when you are not born again, you marry 20. Okay? Now you're born again. If the 20 want to stay with you, you stay with them. If Jesus comes, you and the 20 wives will be with Jesus. There is no marriage in heaven. Remember, they asked Jesus about the man who got married to a woman, he died. Her brother, his brother married her, he died. To the seven brothers, and they asked Jesus, which of them will be the husband of this woman? And Jesus said, there's no marriage in heaven. Everybody in heaven is a spirit like the angels. We don't marry there. So again, if you are married to more than one wife before you met Christ, you, if, they, if they want to stay with you, you're free to stay with them. However, it may be difficult for you to fulfill ministry effectively in the church because of the level of understanding. But of course, you are saved and you have Christ. But a believer that is born of God it will not even be in him a desire to go and marry more than one wife because of the seed of God that is on his inside. Okay, Global Baba, still from the north central part of Nigeria, we'll go to Niger State. Hello, sir. My name is Minurat. 
Aside from me, nah, nah, I just stayed. I'm a Muslim, but a lover of your program on WAP TV. I also believe in the powers of prayer, Global Barber. Sir, I'm facing some marital challenges. A strange woman has blinded my husband. He no longer sees me and my kids as anything, sir. I really need your help, sir, so the Lord will deliver my husband from the bondage of that strange woman. I believe in the powers of your prayer. I know that God cannot come down by himself and do it for me. He has to use someone. He has to use someone, and that is you. I surely believe that that someone is you, sir. I also believe I'll come back and testify by the grace of God, sir. Thank you. Remain blessed. Wow, you know, a lot of Muslims are following our teachings, and it's a blessing to have read from you. We pray for your family right now. We break the control of every diabolical influence over your husband, over your marriage. Be broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we declare a miracle of freedom for your husband and sanity for your home. And above all, we also pray that your eyes be open to know Christ and grow in the knowledge of Christ. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Expect still, to hear yeah. from us. Still from the central part of Nigeria, we head to Abuja. That's also the political, the governmental capital of Nigeria. Hello, Global Baba and Mr. Michael Bush. One of the things I noticed in the four Gospels, Global Baba, is that Jesus used many parables to explain that he was fulfilled as the God-man among the Jews. And in Matthew chapter 18, after Peter revealed Jesus as the Christ, he, Jesus Christ, charged his disciples in verse 20 not to tell anyone that it was Jesus the Christ. What was this so in this instance, Global Baba, any clarity, Michael, in Abuja? So they don't kill him. You know, if there was even a time they tried to kill him. They kept trying to kill him before time. So because he didn't want to be exposed and he didn't want people to know as at yet who he was in his full color. So that's why he kept telling them, tell nobody, tell nobody until the appointed time. But when he rose from the dead, he said, go into all the world and tell them about me. So it was for a time. Okay, Global Bar, I just want us to do a short movement. I'm seeing, I'm just looking at, okay, can we spend the night in, um, from Abuja? Global Bar, where do you want us to go? Eritrea or where do you want us to go? United Eritrea States, America? Eritrea is a nice place. Eritrea, let's go there. Yes. Global Bar and the Intercontinental, it seems there is growing interest in Global Bar's teaching in Eritrea. Having heard my name in the Ask the Counselor segment, a certain pastor from Eritrea told me to forward to you his committed interest in your teaching, and that is local assemblies also drawing from your teachings on KLN, but he's also much more interested to establish connections with you to the end that he will be able to raise disciples for Christ. How can your books reach him, and which of your books would you recommend for him and for his local assembly at this level? Thank you, Global Barber. Wow, that's a blessing to know Absolutely. about what God is doing in Eritrea. Yeah. Well, I would recommend for him my book... Um, the Christocentric meal is a good book for him to have and welcome to God's family and the office of a pastor. The Christocentric meal, welcome to God's family and the office of the pastor. They will help him for starters and there are many others. Okay, so we spend the night in a retreat and uh, tomorrow is another day. We'll come back here and continue in style. My name is Michael Bush, complete with this production team to call on Global Barber to take us home. The Global Intercontinental, Barber. Mr. Bush. It's been a wonderful day today, I tell Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Fantastic. Hey, we want to thank all of you for giving us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God. Always a joy, always an honor for us to serve you, you know, uh, to serve you your diet, which is Christ himself. We want to encourage you to get more people to be part of the conference tomorrow. It's going to be very explosive. And don't forget to join us tonight on Inspiration 9 to 10, uh, 10 to 12, uh, Heritage FM. Tomorrow morning, 545 XLFM, 11 to 1, Radio Aquaibom. 1 to 3, XLFM, 3 to 5, you know, your FM. And in the evening like this, at 6 p.m., GMT Plus One will be live with, uh, on Comfort FM, and it's going to be explosive. We love you guys, and we look forward to seeing all of you and having a great time with you tomorrow. And until then, enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Goodbye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen.